Good morning, everybody. I am Deepak Fatak, greeting you from IIT Bombay. Welcome to this IST workshop on uh, basic electronics being conducted by Professor Dinesh Sharma and my other colleagues from the Department of Electrical Engineering. We will have a very brief inaugural function in which I will act as your master of ceremony shortly. Let me begin by welcoming the respected faculty members and the chief guest of the function today, Professor Kandan Maudgalya, who is coordinator for all MHRD national mission projects at IIT Bombay. May I invite Professor Kandan Maudgalya here, please? Thank you, Professor, for joining us. May I request Professor Dinesh Sharma? Thank you, Dinesh. Professor John. Thank you very much. Professor Patil, not here. Professor Patil couldn't join us uh, today, but of course, he will be meeting you very often during this course. Ms. Madhumita. Before I request uh, Professor Kandan to say a few words, let me just tell you that in the series of IST workshops that we have been conducting in this mode, uh, we first began with some pilot uh, workshops and carried on. Uh, initially, we conducted courses in computer science, computer programming and database management systems. Just this year, almost a month ago, uh, we forayed into the first non-computer science uh, course for this workshop, which was on thermodynamics and was conducted by my colleague, Professor Guy Tonde and his colleagues from Mechanical Engineering Department. And now, we have another extremely important core course in engineering in basic electronics being conducted by Professor Dinesh Sharma and his colleagues. When I had started this mission project, the ambition was to have more than 1,000 teachers in a workshop like this to address the issues of scale of large-scale faculty members who wish to attend such workshops and benefit from them. We use a blended mode of instructions here. The lectures will be delivered from IIT Bombay, whereas the lab assignments and tutorials will be conducted at remote centers under the supervision of expert faculty members who themselves have participated in a one-week preparatory program physically at IIT Bombay. What is so special about this course is this course has recorded the highest ever attendance so far. When we began, we had workshop attendees in the range of 700 to 800. The largest attended course so far was the database management systems course taken by Professor Sudarshan, and it had about 1,049 uh, or so attendees. I am very glad to record that this course has more than 1,300 teachers attending from all over the country. This is the largest ever attendance. As I had proudly claimed that teachers' empowerment on this scale has never known to have taken place anywhere else in the world. We were the first country to attempt it successfully. And now I am glad to add further to that record that never before 1,300 teachers assembling at multiple places have benefited from a one-week, two-week workshop of this kind. So my compliments and welcome to this workshop. Uh, without further ado, let me request our chief guest, Professor Kandan Maudgalya, to make his brief remarks. Good morning. On behalf of the uh, National Mission on Education through ICT, which is sponsoring this uh, event, I would like to invite you all to this uh, course. Um, so, first about myself, 
although I started as a chemical engineer out of the love for uh, electrical engineering, I went and got another master's degree and I do more work. My work can be more classified as uh, electrical engineering work. By the way, although you may have several departments, electrical, electronics, telecom separately, here all of them come under electrical engineering. So, when I say electrical engineering, it covers all the fields including microelectronics. Um, so, um, what I want to, uh, I want to say a brief, uh, in brief about the National Mission on Education through ICT. This is started uh, to raise the levels of education in the country, including the uh, colleges, private colleges, funded uh, aided colleges, unaided colleges and so on. The total outlay on this mission is 4600 crore and in fact, the first uh, phase of that is going to end by the end of this financial year. Hopefully, this will continue in the next plan period also. I will not uh, uh, spend too much time on that. Uh, I have already created a video tutorial and it is available at spoken dash tutorial dot org slash NME ICT dot intro. So, already available, it is about uh, 8 minute uh, video, it explains that. Essentially, the mission has three components. One is to create content, the second one is to give bandwidth, third one is to give low cost access device. Uh, you would have heard a lot about this low cost access device and we expect the first lot of 1000 to arrive very soon and it is going to be available at a cost of rupees 2200 rupees. Now, um, about this, uh, uh, I will just say a few words about the content generation. Uh, you would know about NPTEL, NPTEL is a flagship uh, project of this uh, mission. Uh, as a part of this uh, mission, content generation, IIT Bombay also created a lot of courses live. In fact, following the footsteps of uh, what Professor uh, Fotek started here, in fact, in this very uh, room where I am talking from. And I am glad to say that we uh, transmitted almost 5000 hours of lectures and about half of them happened to come from um, in electrical engineering. In fact, towards the end, I would say that electrical engineering courses exceeded computer science courses. So, um, so that uh, makes me, you know, it is an appropriate uh, uh, remark for this uh, talk. The, let me just see. The other important thing that I want to talk about, mention here as a part of this uh, uh, national mission projects is um, the virtual lab. Because the question is, if you just make available only the theory courses, it does not complete training. So, what do we do? So, uh, the government thought that virtual labs is possibly uh, one option and I am glad to say that uh, you will see, uh, you will get exposed to virtual labs. Uh, in the E area through this course. So, finally, I would like to point out some of the projects that are being done as a part of this mission at uh, IIT Bombay. Uh, one of the projects is this 1000 teacher training program. So, I am glad to say that uh, we will have to rename this, rename the title of this project to 1300 teacher training program. Okay, that is the very first one. So, you will get, uh, I do not have to say anything more than that. I want to talk about, uh, I want to mention briefly the other uh, projects that are happening here and many of these, in fact, all the projects do invite your participation, active participation. In fact, you could all become partners in this. Uh, one of the things that Professor Patek is planning in this uh, this 1000 teacher training uh, program itself is to have lectures delivered by experts from
from any college, so long as that person is an expert, the, the affiliation actually does not matter. So, this project will go towards, go in that direction in the near future. So, uh, I would like to emphasize that we invite your participation, in fact would like you to become partners in our endeavor. The first thing that I would like to mention, one of the projects that uh, happening here is uh, uh, Scilab. Scilab is an excellent replacement for uh, MATLAB. I know that most of you are using MATLAB in your curriculum. I just want to point out that most of your students will not have access to MATLAB when they leave your college, okay. whether they go to industry or whether they start their own private enterprise whatever it may be, they will not have access to MATLAB, because it is extremely expensive. Uh, so, we have been uh, supporting, we have been promoting uh, an equivalent open source software called Scilab. So, the website for that is scilab.in. In fact, um, one of the coordinators of this project is Professor Madhu Belur of Electrical Engineering at IIT Bombay. Uh, so, we are uh, under this, we have a project called Textbook Companion. This project involves creating code for worked out examples of standard textbook. And I am glad to say that in this summer alone, IIT Bombay is hosting 50 students from around the country. Some of these students, in fact many of these students could be from your colleges. And then uh, by the very soon we will have about 100 textbooks, Scilab code for 100 textbooks in our, um, in this uh, website. And this is something that is participatory, collaborative and good students from your college can help uh, create this national resource. The second thing that I want to talk about in uh, Scilab is, one is textbook companion, the other one is um, promoting this as a tool for hardware interfacing. Okay. So, for example, we have been able to connect through Scilab almost 150 A2D cards, um, digital I.O. cards and so on and so forth, completely through open source software without any proprietary tool such as LabVIEW. In fact, as a replacement for LabVIEW, we are working on a product called GNU Radio. GNU Radio, of course, we are using, we have now made GNU Radio to work with Scilab. GNU Radio has very nice hardware, uh, nice graphical features like sliders, um, knobs and so on. And uh, I believe that this can replace, uh, this is extremely important because our entire virtual labs project of the mission which I mentioned earlier is dependent on LabVIEW and LabVIEW is a proprietary tool. So, this is another thing. So, as I mentioned earlier, we would like your participation in all of these. We have a, a, we have a project called Ask a Question. So, let me write the website for this. Co learn dot in dot ask. In fact, uh, this is a one hour contact program, one hour per week and it is uh, uh, in, in this one hour session, our faculty members, electrical engineering faculty members answer questions posed by students in a forum available at this website. More information on how to join this uh, is given here and I would uh, uh, like you to bring this to the attention of your students who can post conceptual questions. And then uh, maybe during this course itself, there can be uh, more mention of this. It is right now supported by 
uh, our uh, we are doing this only in electrical engineering to start with we might extend this to other subjects in the future i think we have already completed 20 plus sessions uh, uninterrupted in this so i think i would uh, stop here um, because uh, it's already 9:30 um, I would like to stop here. There are a few other things like NG spice, ECAD and things like that, that uh, we are working on, but you would actually see them uh, during the course of this, um, you know, 10 days, next 10 days. So, I want to uh, congratulate you for uh, uh, participating in this uh, uh, program. In fact, I am really excited by this. Uh, I myself plan to attend some of these lectures whenever I have time. Uh, I want to wish you all the very best and uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, even in this course, uh, this has, which has been planned in a collaborative mo mode, this Moodle uh, interface will be available at least for one more year and um, it is going to be a national resource and uh, whatever you create now can be used by you and uh, do please participate, do ask your questions and uh, grill our faculty members with your questions and nothing delights the faculty members more than tough questions. Okay, with that I welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you Professor Kannan. Uh, I would just like to uh, correct him uh, by adding that uh, not only you all but all other teachers and students across the country and in fact across the world would be able to use the contents that get created as a part of this workshop and all such workshops uh, because all of them are going to be released in open source under the Creative Commons license. Uh, indeed, uh, that should be an additional incentive for all the participating teachers to contribute significantly during and after this workshop so that we collaboratively increase the accessible knowledge contents for the benefit of all learners across the country. Uh, may I request Professor Dinesh Sharma, although he and his colleagues will be engaging uh, with you over the next 10 days, but on this occasion, I would request him to say at least a few words. Professor Sharma. Welcome to the workshop. I'm sure we'll get to know each other quite well. We are, uh, I have uh, Professor John here and Madam Date. Uh, uh, Professor Mahesh Patil will join uh, soon and we are hoping that we will persuade Professor Apte who gave some lectures in the uh, forerunner of this uh, program to give at least uh, one lecture in the course. He is uh, away and uh, cannot take as, ma as many lectures uh, as he did in the forerunner. Uh, but as a preamble to this course, I would like to begin first of all by uh, thanking Professor Patak. We have a small uh, community here uh, of uh, teachers who are uh, passionately interested in enlarging this community and including uh, all teachers outside of the IIT system, outside of the talked about uh, uh, institutions and worry together about the level of education in our country. And it has taken uh, the vision of uh, Professor Fatak to expand it to a level where uh, we have reached today so that uh, we have this course and there will be more than a thousand teachers participating together in this venture. As Professor Kandan pointed out, there are many other means and activities through which we have been trying to reach through to this community and I am really privileged uh, to know that through these efforts, now we will have a big enough community and this community is not restricted to a period of 5 or 10 days, that we have a means of communicating with each other, sharing each other's concern, providing solutions to each other over a period of at least one year. And that this is a scalable solution and versions of this for other courses and for other disciplines will surely follow. I think this is the way to go. One of the major bottlenecks to education uh, in a country is the availability of well trained teachers in large enough numbers and every effort in this direction is indeed welcome. Uh, we must 
put our shoulders together and there is no question of being a teacher or a taught uh, in this series of courses. Uh, eventually, we are together shoulder to shoulder in this and most of the remarks made up to now point to that direction. We would like experts among you to do the lecturing work. We would like you to come up with ideas on which is the best way to go about and train a very large number of teachers in this and many other courses. That done, I would like to now uh, come specifically to this particular course. Uh, basic electronics as the name implies is indeed a fundamental and base course in uh, electrical engineering. This is a course that all the teachers that you see here have taught uh, earlier to our first year students to second year students, uh, not only to electrical engineering students, but in fact to uh, all uh, students who join uh, IIT Bombay. And therefore, it is indeed a pleasure to uh, share the lessons that we have learnt in the teaching of this subject with so many of you. I am sure we will all uh, enrich our experience through discussions with you, because I am sure most of you have also had uh, this experience. Uh, the topics included in this course uh, are not the topics, not necessarily the topics that we teach in the IIT uh, Bombay curriculum. In fact, it is a union of the courses taught uh, in your curricula in various universities and centers around uh, India. Therefore, uh, we have assured relevance, the points that we discuss, the uh, labs that we do and the lectures that we take are indeed the lectures that most of you would be taking in your universities and colleges. Uh, so, therefore, we are not essentially forcing down your throat a curriculum which may or may not have been relevant to your uh, situation. Indeed, one of the points of discussion would be how to improve the contents of this course and how to make it more uniform. However, this course is not only to teach you about the content, it is to discuss which is the best way to get the material across and how to develop tutorial material which can be of use to a large number of uh, people right across the country. So, we have you have the you have the uh, curriculum uh, of this uh, course with you and we will through a series of lectures over the next 10 days, uh, we will take up uh, various uh, topics and uh, we will have discussion sessions. As uh, Professor Fatak had pointed out, there was a forerunner to this course which was conducted in March, where people from various organizing centers came here in person. We had classes for them in person at that time and uh, indeed the labs were conducted very enthusiastically, I am very happy to add. Uh, indeed, there were people doing these experiments till late in the evening, uh, well beyond the hours of normal closure of our uh, labs and I hope to see that same level of involvement and, uh, uh, and excitement uh, when these labs are conducted at all uh, organizing centers uh, for this course. I am indeed very happy to see the wide uh, acceptance that this course has received. It has encouraged us, it makes all of us feel that our efforts are worthwhile and it will also uh, motivate us to include other topics uh, in future. Indeed, during this course, there will be a short session in which we will introduce two further courses, which will be carried out uh, in this uh, uh, series itself. There is going to be a course on embedded system and another on photovoltaics. Uh, so, please spread the word around to your colleagues who might be interested in these courses and there will be an introductory session on these uh, courses later. I think that is about the introduction uh, that I have. And uh, uh, for the closure of this uh, uh, session, I will uh, hand back to Professor Fatak uh, uh, for the concluding uh, comment and I have uh, comments and I have a request to our uh, studio uh, uh, technical audience to introduce the support staff uh, as well by a pan across and to introduce all the people who have made this uh, considerable effort possible through their hard work and through their uh, dedication, getting the network ready, talking to various people, sending all the electronics uh, equipment across and so on. So, I think this will be a good occasion to pan through and to introduce the people who have made it all possible. And I will now hand over to Professor Fatah. Thank you, Professor Sharma. 
In fact, uh, what Prash Sharma suggested is the uh, standard part of my thanksgiving at the end of the inaugural function. So, uh, let me begin by thanking uh, my own colleagues from the teams who have been working tirelessly for many months and in fact for many years for similar workshops. Uh, could we have the pan over people please? So, let me begin by uh, with my managers, uh, Dr. Mukta Atre and Kalpana. Uh, many of you would have received correspondence from them related to this workshop. I have Mr. Sajjan Kumar Dikshit, who is in charge of the video facilities. Sitting in front of him is Mr. Prakash Vaidya, who has been an advisor to the project for a variety of things, including contents. Uh, we are using the AV tool, which has been developed by Amruta. In fact, Dr. Kamal Bijlani and I have decided to work together to release this entire tool in open source. Uh, currently, by the way, the only non-open source proprietary component used by the tool is a video streaming server, which is used from Adobe. We are trying to replace it by an open source RAID 5 server and we will soon succeed in that. Uh, so, this is my team here. I would also like to thank the colleagues from electrical engineering department who very enthusiastically sponsored the idea of teaching non-computer science, non-theory courses. Uh, virtual labs were mentioned by both Professor Kandan and Professor Sharma. But perhaps this is the right moment to tell you that under uh, the aegis of the virtual labs activities in the electrical engineering department, uh, Mrs. Date and her colleagues have done enormous amount of work. And in fact, as we speak, some of the cars are leaving Mumbai physically to reach you in time for the last day of experiment. This is extremely important because this is, a, this is the first time we are trying this on a large scale. And if this succeeds, we would like to extend it to other disciplines as well. So, Professor Sharma, thank you very much. You and your colleague, John Patil is not here. Uh, I would like to mention that just teaching core courses is useful but not adequate because we need expertise in faculty in all courses that are taught in engineering. I am in fact hoping that the government funding will be extended next year to start not one that not only to continue the hub at IIT Bombay, but to start many such hubs at other IITs and NITs, which could actually specialize in specific fields, such as mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, and concentrate on conducting such workshops for specific courses, including electives at the higher level. As a part of this program itself, we are trying to make another ambitious activity uh, to be realized next summer. So, let me just take one minute to mention it. Uh, there is a course on research methodologies and research approach, a very short course which was conducted at IIT Bombay by a colleague professor from IIT Madras, uh, Professor Karmarkar. In fact, our current head of chemical engineering, Professor Sachin Patwadhan, had facilitated that course. And our research scholars found that to be an extremely important foundation course on all aspects of how to begin and continue your research. It not only talks about research methodology, it talks about research motivation, talks about problems that you face. That is not a course which requires a lab, that course requires discussion and some kind of uh, internal working and reporting. So, I am planning to convert it into a one week IST uh, workshop. And this workshop, my ambition is that it should reach to 10,000 plus people. So, that is the next level because, because practically every researcher, independent of the field in which one is working, would benefit from such a program. And uh, there are teachers amongst us, very large number in fact, who are either pursuing their PhD or wish to pursue their PhD. So, please keep this in mind. The post workshop, there will be a pre workshop uh, small questionnaire, by the way, which will be administered, which will be put up on the Moodle. Uh, by today. Please do answer it. Please take about 10-15 minutes uh, to answer that. And we will be putting up the post workshop feedback in a similar fashion. The objective of these uh, small questionnaires, apart from the other surveys that would be conducted, is to get a feedback on making these courses better. There are other people who should be thanked. 
first people from the institute who are missing here. Uh, two of my colleagues who head the respective organizations which help in such uh, uh, extended educational programs. One is the head of our continuing education program, uh, Prashashok Ashok Joshi, and the other is the current head of our Center for Distance Engineering Education program, Professor Tembe. Both of them and their organizations have been supporting this workshop extensively and we are grateful. The entire mission project is run under the office of Dean R&D, Professor Rangan Banerjee and Professor Balaji are our Dean R&D and Associate Deans uh, currently and that office has been extensively helping us. Uh, you will realize that about uh, 32 remote centers, 35 remote centers and 1000 teachers and all their uh, monetary transactions involved, uh, handling the budgets, handling the uh, uh, invoices, handling the bills is not a small affair and we are helped extensively by these people. And of course, we receive support from all other deans and the director of this institute himself in, in absolutely all respects, wherever we need anything. Before closing this session, I would like to mention a few names which are very critical, which in fact, those people nobody has ever seen in these workshops. One particular person I would like to mention, uh, Mr. Sinha, uh, who has been a dreamer like some of us here, and he is the one whom we can properly call as the architect of the entire national mission project. I think it is only fitting that I express my gratitude to him and his colleagues in the ministry for supporting this idea and for generously funding this project. I would like to end this uh, uh, now and I think the lecture begins immediately or is there a break now or lecture begins immediately. Thank you so much.